morning and welcome to part two of this electric vehicle help guide. Uh, the idea behind this is just to help you get through all those, those questions that you have at the start that you wonder, what do, what do all these acronyms mean and what do I really need to know to help me buy and use an electric vehicle? So today we're going to look at the battery. That's one of the biggest questions that uh, people have about electric vehicles. Uh, the range in particular and degradation. How will that affect you as the years go by? Now with range you can be easily misled and you'll see adverts for cars and it will quote amazing figures for how far these electric vehicles can actually drive. But that's based on a certain set of tests. Now these tests, well they're different. It's really confusing and the one thing I think we can all agree on is the range that you see on those posters, it, they can never reach it because the tests are done in very specific conditions. They're done in laboratories, they're done on uh, rolling roads, they're done with temperatures that are like a spring or a summer's day in most countries in the world. So it, it's never going to test an electric vehicle and its battery as it should do. And well, electric vehicles, as we'll see, their batteries are really affected by things like extreme, extremes of temperature. So let's just talk through the, the three test procedures you'll probably hear about, uh, and you've probably just know them by acronyms, but I'm just going to give you a very brief overview of what they're all about. Now the first test you may have heard of is the EPA or the Environmental Protection Agency. Now this is a test uh, in America in the 70s would you believe, uh, so it has no real bearing on modern vehicles whatsoever. The maximum speed they ran that test at was 60 miles an hour. The second test you may hear about is the NEDC, now that's the New European Driving Cycle. That was designed in the 80s, again with uh, fossil burning vehicles in mind, that has a maximum speed of 75 miles an hour. And the third one you'll probably hear of is the WLTP, World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure. Uh, yeah, that's a mouthful isn't it? That's a bit more modern uh, and it's generally thought of as the most accurate test to try and give you an idea of the range that electric vehicles can do. Now they run the test up to 82 miles an hour, but uh, it's done lots of stopping and starting over a longer period of time. And uh, it, it does give us, I hesitate to say, reasonably accurate figures. So as you can see, those test figures, they're, they're not conclusive at all. And um, somebody's worked out that between the three different tests, you can have a variance of 28% in what they're telling you the cars can do. And just to highlight that, uh, I've looked up two test figures for you. Uh, the, uh, on the BMW i3, the EPA test says it can do 114 miles. On the uh, NEDC test, it says it can do 186 miles. So not conclusive in any way, shape or form and can't be relied on. So how do you know what your car can actually do? Well, if you speak to current electric vehicle owners, look on their forums and um, do a little bit of research as far as that's concerned, you'll see that they always talk about miles per kilowatt hour or watt hours per mile. Now remember, uh, 1000 watts equals one kilowatt. So that gives you an idea of the, um, the scales we're talking about. If I was to look at my car, it's a 24 kilowatt hour leaf. I average about 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. I'm looking at just over 90 miles per charge. Now bear in mind that you're, you don't use the top part and you don't use the bottom part of your battery. That's is to protect your battery. The manufacturer's building the software to stop it being used. So you can bring that down a bit. Uh, I find I can get about 80 miles uh, from a charge. So that's about right. So 3.9 nine miles per kilowatt hour, I can expect to get a, that little bit less than the size of my battery. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and it's the same, you can work it out with uh, watt hours per mile. So have a look on the forums and speak to people that own these cars uh, and you'll get, get a, a, an idea of what people can do. I, I'm quite average in that 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour with my shape Nissan Leaf. Some people can get way over 4, 4.5, some struggle to get over 3.5. But there's other things, of course, there's other things that can affect the range. There's things like uh, the, the temperature, the external temperature. If it's very, very hot or especially if it's very, very cold, it's a battery. Batteries don't work well in the cold. They don't last as well. So you will see that your range will start to drop off. So they are the, the, the key points that you need to consider when you're thinking about the range and how far your car will go. So let's go on to the degradation. So we know about short term, the range, but what about long term? What about if you intend to keep that car for five years, 10 years, maybe more? How quickly will that battery run out? And well, after five years, is it even worth buying a used electric car? The trouble with batteries is 
At some point they give up and they degrade to a point where they're unusable anymore. But what actually causes them to lose their life? Well, there's two main things. The first is charge cycles, and that's the amount of times that you charge the battery, uh, whether it be from flat to full or somewhere in between. There's only an infinite amount of times that that can happen with a battery. The second is time, the actual age of the battery. The older it is, the more it will degrade. Uh, and a combination of those two things ultimately means that the battery will stop working at some point. Now, loads of studies have been done on this and I could point you to countless YouTube videos where people have looked at uh, different parts of it in isolation. So I've seen people say that uh, they've had batteries sat on a shelf for years and years and years and they've actually lost none of their capacity. But we've got to be realistic with this. There is always going to be extremes. There's always going to be somebody that will tell you and probably back it up with evidence that I don't know, their battery lasted two years and now it's completely dead. Or their battery lasted for 40 years, I don't know, and it's, um, it's still got its full capacity. There's always gonna be extremes. What I'm interested in is the main, the masses, what happens to most of the batteries. And as I said before, there's certain things that will affect your range. Well, likewise, those things will also affect how long your battery lasts. Now, if you drive lots and lots of miles and you're always recharging, then of course, the number of charge cycles are gonna increase, your battery is going to degrade. If you live in a particularly cold area, then you're not gonna have as much range from your battery, so you're gonna be charging it more often, so your battery is going to degrade. And likewise, if you live in a particularly hot area, batteries don't like being overly hot, so your battery will degrade as a result of that. But I don't live in any of these areas of extreme heat or cold. He says, just as his low temperature warning light comes on. Uh, it's three degrees here at the moment. That's, it's winter time in the UK. Uh, we've been down, I think, to minus two so far, which for us is cold, but actually it's not that cold compared to a lot of other places. And it only happens for a few days of the year. Most of the time, we just sit at a, quite an ambient temperature. And I think that's probably similar for the vast majority of people that buy electric vehicles. That, Let's not look at the extremes, let's look in the middle. And um, it gives us that average view of what batteries can do. And then you can adjust that. And I suggest that if you do live somewhere where it's particularly cold or particularly hot, talk to other people in the area, look at the forums, see what they're getting out of their cars range-wise. And please, please, please do not be put off by all these scare stories. Now, one of the things you can do if your battery degrades to such a point that it's unusable anymore is you can have it replaced and there are replacement schemes around the world set up to do that. Nissan have got one set up and I don't even know if it's come to the UK yet to be honest I can't remember but whilst I've looked at it and there have been some issues with price rises I personally don't know anyone who's ever changed their battery. Now I know it's been done uh, but I know when I bought this car three and a half years ago, at that point, there hadn't been a single battery replaced under warranty by Nissan in the UK. I'm sure there's always going to be an example of something happening, but it just doesn't happen that much. And that's enforced by the warranties. I think, to be honest, uh, most vehicles now, electric vehicles come with a minimum of uh, eight years and 100,000 mile warranty. Uh, some are 10 years plus. So if they're putting warranties on of that length, well, they're not expecting the battery to then suddenly degrade in the ninth year, if it's an eight year warranty, they're expecting a, a decent buffer, a decent cushion for themselves. So it's, again, just all shows to me that there's nothing to worry about with the batteries. And when we're talking about charge cycles, degrading batteries, there's two types of charging that you do in these cars. Of course, there's this type of charging you do at home, the slow charging, and there's the rapid charging. And there's, a, there's some evidence to suggest that rapid charging will degrade your battery a lot quicker than home charging because it's a, it's a super fast zap of power into your battery, heating up all the cells, making them work hard. Uh, so yeah, of course, there's a chance that that is going to degrade your battery more. But that said, there's also, there's a number of companies that run taxis that rapid charge every day and they don't have any issues. So that brings back in that balance of, well, if you're rapid charging every day and you're doing that sort of mileage, you haven't got your car for as long, so as many years. So that degradation through age isn't as apparent. 
But it's something that certainly the manufacturers highlight, and I think it's important to highlight that if you do do a lot of miles and you intend to rapid charge your car all the time, the chances are your battery will degrade that much quicker. And while we're charging, people talk about maintaining or looking after the battery in the best possible way, and they talk about keeping it between 20 and 80%. So that's you never let it go down be below 20%, and you never let it charge up above 80%. And that just ex just protects those extremes at either end so you're not pushing the battery. Now, all the manufacturers, they already put in a, a software that protects the battery. So the battery cannot charge up to its full capacity. So in my mind, and especially as I've got such a small battery, I've never protected this car. I've never done the 20 to 80% rule. My car gets charged up every single day to 100%, no matter what I've used. Even if I've only used 95%, it gets plugged in and charged up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop up here and plug in uh, my OBD2, which is a little device that allows us to read uh, all the data, the diagnostics, everything to do with this car. And um, that shows us what the actual state of health is like on this battery. Okay, so I'm all plugged in and uh, on your screen, you'll be able to see Leaf Spy. It's, uh, as I say, a program that shows me everything about the diagnos diagnostics of this car. Now this graph here, you see all the red and blue lines there, that's each individual cell of my battery. But the thing that we want to look at is the top there. So right along the top, you'll see it says uh, BATS STS, or battery status, and then the second figure along, SOH, state of health, and it's 91.4%. So this is a 2015 Nissan Leaf, 24 kilowatt hour. It's three and a half years old. I've done 45, nearly 45 and a half thousand miles. Um, on my dashboard, it's showing that I still have 12 bars, the, the full amount, and my exact state of health is 91.4%. So that gives you an idea that even after nearly, nearly 45 and a half thousand miles, I've lost what 8% of my battery, not less than 9%. So range wise, that's less than 10 miles. And um, I've got to be honest, driving this, I don't really notice a big drop in range at all. I haven't noticed any different. Certainly when I get in, the guesser meter shows the same sort of mileage as I was always getting. So it's it's not made a massive difference to me. So when it comes to talking about batteries and what they're like and whether they degrade, uh, I my personal experience and having done this channel for um, well nearly two years now and obviously speaking to lots and lots of people all over the world, actually let's not get worried about them. So please don't be scared of uh, buying an electric car and batteries and battery degradation expect them to last, especially if you're in a climate like I am. There's nothing to worry about. So there you go. That's uh, a little bit today about um, batteries as far as range is concerned and degradation. Hopefully it's put your mind at rest. If you've got any questions, as we said before, stick them in the comments. Uh, it would be brilliant to answer any of those questions. And there's a great community of people that get involved in that. Uh, and I think I've probably got one, maybe two more of these videos in mind, but if there's anything in particular you want to hear about or you want me to try and help you with, please tell me because it's, as I said in the first video, it's an evolving series and I'm more than happy to uh, talk about anything that will help anyone to understand electric vehicles and maybe help them get into one. So that's it for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, remember to like and share, uh, support the channel via Patreon. And um, until the next one, you take care and I'll see you soon.